this next tutorial on using the flowchart for analysis will show you how you can perform peak detection. So let's first load the same data frame that we've been using. And we can perform peak detection using the peak detect node. And this node basically just uses derivatives to get the local minima and maxima of the curve and therefore find the peaks and bases. And if you are not familiar with this method for peak detection, um, I've linked a book in both the signal processing section of the docs um, as well as the peak detection node uh, documentation to, um, to this book by uh, Tom O'Haver, who is a professor that's written a really good introductory book on signal processing. So um, before doing peak detection with derivatives, it's often useful to uh, significantly filter uh, out noise from your curves. So you can do that either using a Butterworth filter or a savitsky golay filter. So I'll show you how to do that with the Butterworth filter for now. Okay, let's put that in. So, yep, DF over F. Let's just display this with a simple plot to see what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, that's quite smooth. And compare with before, you can see that's quite noisy. And if we had sent this through peak detection, um, it would have just put peaks and bases everywhere. And just again to demonstrate live aspects of the flowchart, you can change uh, like these values here and you can view the live updates in an associated plot. I'll just keep it as that for now. Okay, let's get rid of this plot. Then I will feed this to a normalization node. And it is useful to normalize the data before doing derivatives for peak detection um, because this can help you put absolute amplitude thresholds uh, between zero and one that can be applied for your entire um, data set in order to get rid of you know very small bumps that are near zero and exclude them from peaks. Okay. And then finally, send this through a derivative. Okay. So derivatives goes there, the normalized curve goes here. And then finally, the unfiltered curve goes here, onto which peaks and bases will be placed. And the reason for which um, you may want to put the peaks and bases onto your unfiltered curve is because um, in order to get optimal peak detection, you often need to um, use a high amount of filter to get rid of uh, noise. Uh, however, that can affect uh, you know the actual uh, biological signal from the, the from the raw unprocessed curve, like. High filters uh, will often reduce uh, the amplitudes of the of the curves, and that could, you know, that artifact, um, you know, could affect something downstream. And similarly, high filters will also broaden the width of uh, of peaks. So that's also something which you don't want. And all of these artifacts that can be introduced by um, by filtering is also talked about uh, in this book by Tom O'Haver, which I highly recommend going through if you have never performed uh, signal processing before. So um, this amplitude threshold absolute, which you see over here, if you have put in normalized data through here, it will be a value between zero and one, um, which as I mentioned, can be used to filter out um, peaks, which are very small. Okay, so let's apply that. 
and this will show you the progress and it's done and um, this check mark here called fictional bases all it does is it puts a base at um, the very first frame uh, of your videos or basically you know the the very first index of the curve and at the very last position of the curve. And the reason um, for putting a base there is um, because if you don't have that, it, uh, it could uh, create problems in peak, in peak detection. But um, anyways, this uh, you can manually edit the curves uh, in order to uh, maybe get rid of last incomplete peaks if that's something that you uh, don't want but peak detection in general will not work if you have not chosen to put those fictional first and last bases okay so now let's open the GUI to take a look at this so this I guess would still benefit from uh, some filtering actually but you can scroll through um, basically all of your curves down here. I will actually increase uh, the filter down here and you will see a live update. Huh. So that got rid of a few. So you look at, this one is just very noisy anyway. That one looks pretty okay. Set that to 15. Ah, there. Got rid of those small ones over there. So this just again demonstrates how powerful mesmerize can be where you can um, you can really play around with your parameters in this flowchart and you have these very um, comprehensive interactive plots that all interact together. Let's set that to like five or something. Okay. And another thing you can do with uh, with a peak detect uh, node GUI is you can manually move peaks and bases around or manually add and delete peaks and bases. So you have an option of these five different modes. So in the view mode, it's you know it doesn't do anything if you like click on a peak or a base in the drag mode you can drag these around example in the add peak mode you can add peaks and in the delete mode you can delete peaks and bases So one um, important thing to uh, take note of is uh, when you're using the peak detect node and you want to do downstream analysis, you have to make sure that every single peak is flanked by two bases. And any base which is not associated with a peak is just ignored downstream. So for example, let's say, Let's say you have something that finally looks like this. This is perfectly fine. You have, you know, these three really visible peaks. Uh, well, this might be another one. Uh, but anyway, let's say these three main peaks over here, and they are all associated with bases. But you have a bunch of these bases that are not associated with peaks, and that's fine. And that's just um, ignored and excluded downstream. And when you move on to another curve, the previous curve is automatically saved. Okay. For this, in order to do something else downstream, I will actually just do a bunch of filtering. maybe use higher poly order okay 
at this point let's just okay this is actually where in order to exclude these let's put an absolute amplitude threshold of let's say actually of let's say 0.2 so anything that's below 20 percent of the absolute maxima in every curve will be excluded to five there okay and you can also save uh, the results of your peak detection individually if you want to perhaps continue with editing peaks and bases later on by using a save data node save that go to our project say peaks basis saved click apply okay that has been saved we can get rid of that now and let's just open another flowchart and we can use a load file node to load that back and if you have saved it in the TRN directory of your project you can just use this uh, drop down menu to find it or you can navigate to it so as you can see in our project it has been saved in the TRN's directory so that is why it's available here so this is just a much simpler way to select it and then peak detect node and if you put this output into the PB input node it will load back to that state so like for example this one where or actually where's the one that we changed a bunch yeah this is yeah that's the one that we changed a bunch so yeah you can see that all of the edits are saved 